Hey all, I'm Adarsh Rai. I'm over here to present this wonderful series in front of you, Master the Topic. So here we are again with the discussion about this brand new topic of airplane wind concepts. So what all concepts we are going to discuss in this lecture, we will be using the concepts of motion in two dimension, vector analysis and then obviously there will be an element of frame of reference also, we will be standing on ground and observing the motion of aircraft. Then finally with the help of relative motion we will be in a state wherein we have understood what all cases and possibilities exists in airplane wind problems. So for a start, I would like to ask you people a very simple and a normal question. What is the relevance of a heading indicator inside the cockpit of an aircraft? So the relevance is pretty simple. It actually, as the figure tells us, it actually tells us the direction in which the aircraft is steering. So the next question to my mind is, aircraft is in air and there are no predefined roads on which it should travel. So can its direction be altered in midair? And that's true. It actually gets altered. It's get altered because of the effect of wind on it. Are winds in that much amount that they can alter the direction of an aircraft weighing tons? It is indeed because the winds which we are observing while standing on earth are not of that much amount. But the winds which are at such greater altitudes, they can actually create a change. They can actually alter the direction of an aircraft. So in how many ways actually the wind can alter the direction of an aircraft? So we'll be looking into those things. So what I've done is I've actually segmented the type of winds on the basis of the effect they create on the direction of an aircraft. So I have segmented the winds in three segments. So the first segment is about headwinds, the effect of headwinds on an aircraft. The second is about the effect of tailwinds on an aircraft. And the third one will be talking about crosswinds. Okay. So we'll be looking into all these winds and how actually an aircraft's direction is actually getting altered because of the presence of these winds. So let's begin by actually talking about the effect of headwinds. So what are headwinds actually? So what happens, the winds which are actually directed towards the head, the front portion of an aircraft are known as headwinds. So by the definition only you might have got that in such a situation what happens if the aircraft is moving in forward direction, then the winds are in the direction opposite to it and such winds are actually known as headwinds. So what happens in a headwind is the effective velocity of an aircraft with respect to ground, it gets reduced. As you can see, winds are blowing in this direction and aircraft has a speed in this direction and that will be represented by velocity of aircraft with respect to wind and this will be represented by velocity of wind with respect to ground and what we are observing, we are standing on ground and observing this aircraft, the motion and the path of it. So what we want is we actually need the velocity of aircraft or the airplane with respect to ground. So what we'll be doing, we'll be introducing the frame of wind in it. So this will turn out to be velocity of airplane with respect to wind plus velocity of wind with respect to ground. So in search of velocity of aircraft with respect to ground, I need to vectorically add these two vectors. And this analysis, this case will remain same, whether I talk about headwind, whether I talk about tailwind, or whether I'm talking about crosswinds. Okay, so in each of the cases, I'll be focusing my attention only towards velocity of the aircraft with respect to ground, because I'm standing on ground. And I'm actually observing this airplane, where it is heading for. I want from ground that it should head from India to some other country, then I should be focusing towards this part only. Okay. So now, with this analysis, you can clearly see that in this case, the cases of headwind, the effective velocity gets reduced because of the negative effect of winds on it. Now let us look towards the second case. Now what is the second case? The second case is the effect of tailwinds on an aircraft. So as the name suggests you, what happens? Now the winds are blowing and they are directed towards the tail of the aircraft. So in such a case, what happens? The aircraft is steering in forward direction and even the winds are in forward direction and as a result, the effective speed, effective velocity of the aircraft increases. So as the result remains seems we are in hunt for velocity of aircraft with respect to ground, we will be introducing wind frame in it 
and finally the result will turn out to be this. So in this case, as they both are in forward direction, so the effective speed turns out to be greater and the flight will have a very smooth flow in air. Okay. So this was all about headwind and tailwind. Now, apart from this headwind or tailwind, if the wind is making any angle, if the winds are making any angle with the direction of flow of the aircraft, then such winds are known as crosswind. Okay. So as you can see in this case, the aircraft was heading in forward direction, but the winds are making an angle with the aircraft speed. So in such a case, what happens? Again, the result remains same. We actually need to find velocity of A with respect to ground and that indeed will be velocity of A aircraft with respect to wind plus velocity of wind with respect to ground. So the vector sum of both these vectors and that is as you can see using parallelogram law of addition, I am finally in a state to tell yes that my aircraft will steer in such a fashion when I am observing this aircraft from ground and as you can see it is not horizontal, it is neither in the direction of wind, it is somewhere in between them. Okay, So this is actually how winds can actually alter the direction of an aircraft. They can be headwinds, they can be tailwinds and they can be crosswinds. So crosswinds can actually alter the direction and hence the pilot should always be very keen with his observation on the heading indicator that in which direction the aircraft is actually steering. Okay. So to understand it better, let's solve this question. Okay. So this question says that there's a pilot and he wishes to travel from point A to point B. And this point B is actually northeast of point A. Okay. So what do I mean if I say B is northeast of A? I actually mean that the angle, the angle AB which is making with east will be pi by 4. And similarly this angle will be pi by 4. Okay. What should be the direction in which he should steer the aircraft? So basically they are asking what should be the direction in which the pilot should steer? So what they are asking for is, they are asking for the velocity of the aircraft with respect to wind. And basically, they are not asking about the velocity of aircraft with respect to wind, they are asking about its direction, in which direction he should steer. So if the aircraft, if it flies at 400 kmph in still air, okay, so the magnitude has been given to us. This is the magnitude, velocity of aircraft with respect to wind, and it has been given to us as 400 kmph okay also winds are blowing at 200 root 2 kmph and they are blowing from south okay so the wind direction is in upward direction no problem no problem so the velocity of wind with respect to ground is also given to us and it is given as 200 root 2 kmph okay so what i need to find i actually need to find velocity of a with respect to wind that is velocity of aircraft with respect to wind but not the magnitude only the direction okay one more thing is provided to me the other thing is that i am observing from ground and for me this aircraft is moving from a to point b okay this observation is made from ground okay so i know actually the direction of velocity of aircraft with respect to ground to understand it better let's do a vector analysis for it okay so basically this vector from A to B is actually depicting you the velocity of aircraft with respect to ground. As I'm observing things from ground, I have seen the aircraft has made a flight along such a direction. Now winds from my frame, from ground only, are in upward direction. So what I need to find again, I need to find only velocity of aircraft with respect to ground. right? And how I'm going to do it, I'm going to vectorically add by introducing the wind frame in it. So it will turn out to be velocity of aircraft with respect to wind plus velocity of wind with respect to ground. Okay, perfect. So I need to find now velocity of aircraft with respect to wind as I'm not having that vector over here. Okay, because I need to find that only. I need to find in which direction the pilot should steer his aircraft. So I need to focus my attention towards this. So how I can find this is, so velocity of aircraft with respect to wind now will be velocity of aircraft with respect to ground minus velocity of wind with respect to ground. That means I need to add velocity of A with respect to G plus minus of velocity of wind with respect to ground. So I'll create the minus vector of wind with respect to ground over here. Okay. So I just need to add this vector and this vector. 
So if you know the laws of addition of vector, you can see here the case is of a tail head pair and we can use triangle law of addition. So triangle law of addition will say the resultant vector will be from open tail to open head and here comes my velocity of aircraft with respect to wind. Okay. So here comes my vector, but how to actually tell the direction? I cannot say like, right, move in such a direction. He will not understand the case. I will have to suffice him with proper angles with the horizontal or with north, south, east, west. Okay. So this angle, I clearly know that this angle is pi by 4. So I should just tell him that, okay, hey, uh, let us consider this angle to be alpha. So with north, you should create an angle of pi by 4 plus alpha and then you can head. And then you finally reach from point A to point B. But how to calculate the value of alpha? Do we have some other values given to us? Right. So if this is pi by 4, I can write this angle to be pi by 4. Exactly. Do I know the magnitude of velocity of airplane with respect to wind? Yes, I definitely know. It was given to me that the speed of aircraft in still air is 400 kmph. So I know the magnitude of this vector, right? Even I know the magnitude of this vector as well, velocity of wind with respect to ground. And it is given that the velocity of wind with respect to ground is 200 root 2 kmph. So my mind is actually suggesting me that I can use sine law in this triangle. In this triangle, I can use sine law and so sine law basically tells me that this side divided by the sine of this angle will be equal to this side divided by the opposite that is sine of this angle and that will be equal to this side divided by the sine of this angle. Okay. So I'll be focusing my attention only towards this side and this angle and this side and this angle. Let's name it to be point C so that our things will become easier. So basically, I'll be focusing my attention towards BC upon sine of alpha now will be equal to AC upon sine of pi by 4. Okay, so do I know the value of BC and AC? Yes. BC is given to me, BC is given as 200 root 2. BC is given to me as 200 root 2. Do I know the value of alpha? No. I need to find that. Do I know the value of AC? Yes, it is given to me as 400. And sine pi by 4 will be 1 by root 2. This root 2 will go upward, it will get cancelled by this root 2, this 200 will get cancelled by this. So sin alpha is turning out to be 1 by 2 and hence alpha is turning out to be 30 degree. So basically now I come to the solution that okay, the flight should steer making an angle pi by 4 plus 30 degree that is 75 degree from north and finally in doing so, the aircraft will steer from A to B from ground frame. So this was all for this solution. If you like the solution, give a thumbs up guys. If you love the discussion about airplane wind concepts, subscribe to our channel and comment. Okay, but this is not all. You need to practice more and more questions based on it. So what do you need to do? Go in the description, find a link and download the extra marks app. And why I'm telling you that? Because you need to practice so many questions based on relative motion. Okay, relative motion, it's a tricky element. Okay, and to ace that particular topic in relative motion, you need to practice as many questions as you can. And this is the best platform where you can find hundreds of questions based on relative motion. Okay, you can find questions based on different topics, different class. You can apply some filters and solve as many questions as you can. You can even practice tests. Okay, you can create your own test as well and finally get to know where you are presently standing. So this was all from my end. I'm signing off. All the best for your studies.